two plus the HAO director, Scott McIntosh, uh, after the break. And we'll, we'll go through them. And uh, the first talk is uh, Arakal Petrosian. Uh, and he'll be talking about shallow water MHD. Um, and I'll give you a, 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 a five minutes left when we're at 20 minutes in. Okay. So for, okay. My talk is about where is this? No, oh, this. So we'll put this here. So you can walk My talk is about show of water equations. And interest in this problem is because there are many uh, objects in astrophysics and in space physics which have uh, free surface and uh, thin way. So it's very difficult to solve such problems in normal three-dimensional magnetohydrodynamics and as similar as in fluid dynamics in, uh, in um, geophysical fluid dynamics we are trying to develop shallow water approximation. Uh, these are equations which are widely used for solar tahoe -Klein studies. These equations are, of course, shown of water, which describe horizontal magnetic fields, horizontal um, fluid flow, and contains for, for, for equation for depth of fluid and contains divergence free condition for uh, magnetic field. You can see that uh, we simply may solve first five equations, and uh, this equation is consequences, consequence of first five equations. Our interest is to develop uh, extension of this theory in presence of vertical magnetic fields. So what I will tell, I will derive for equations for MHD shown of water in external vertical magnetic field, show vertical better point approximation for such type equations. I will analyze linear solutions and will develop weakly nonlinear theory with using one multi-scale uh, method. And analyze, uh, similar as is done in plasma physics, if you have nonlinear equations, you will do, uh, predict parametric instabilities, parametric decay, and so on. <coughs> How? I want to derive these equations, you are simply using hydrostatic conditions for vertical components, and you average equations on depth, and you receive such, okay, very interesting equations. But if you do same problem in presence of magnetic fields, you have very difficult problem because if you use hydrostatic and averaging, you will have uh, first five equations new. They will contain, I will show extra terms related external vertical magnetic fields, and you will have divergence free condition for magnetic fields similar like, oops, Similar like uh, you have in traditional uh, M M shell of water MHD. But what is good, interesting, if you do traditional derivation using hydrostatic uh, flow in vertical direction and, uh, and neglecting all uh, uh, dependence on vertical coordinate, you will have equations which are not compatible with, with this condition, divergence free condition for magnetic field. Simply, what do you need to do? You need, again, uh, to derive, uh, to extend this model for situation with external vertical magnetic field. You need just, again, average all MHD equations with a boundary condition and only what is important, you are not able to neglect uh, 
that coordinate. So you are not able to make that. You need, again, to make the averaging also for vertical coordinate. So you can't uh, neglect vertical uh, flows, especially in magnetic fields. So if you consider such type of geometry, you have uh, free surface flow, you have initial equations, you have boundary conditions, you make averaging uh, all, all flows on Z using, of course, hydrostatic conditions, where you can have hydrostatic conditions but still keep uh, short coordinates. And you will have a new set of equations. These equations are very different uh, from, uh, differ from initially uh, classical shown by the equation without external magnetic fields. Because they contain uh, some new terms reaching external magnetic fields, and they contain uh, these equations, which are again separated from first f five equations, uh, which are a result of averaging of uh, non divergent conditions. So now, these equations, which describe non divergent conditions, are consequence of initial five equations. So this system is complete, and differences that it contains that coordinate of magnetic fields. In, indeed, I remind that this Z coordinate of magnetic fields is separated for the system. You again have normal five equations for two velocity components, for two magnetic components, and for depth. And you may use this last two, oops, last two equations uh, just to uh, the solve that component of magnetic field. So this is very interesting results, but we are very disappointed because we do not expect it to have uh, two components of uh, gyrodynamic flow and three components of magnetic fields. So we have three components of magnetic fields, but they depend on two horizontal coordinates. And we don't need to solve these equations because they are, again, consequences of this new show of water approximation. Uh, if you linearize this equation, so you will have uh, magnetoplanetary mode. This is gravitational or magnetogravitational waves. This are in magnetostrophic mode. And this mode, magnetostrophic mode, do, op, do not exist uh, in traditional shallow water approximation. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Because you put, it's just, you know. So, you see these equations. It contains new type of motions, magnetostrophic, which you don't have in normal, uh, traditional description of showing what the force. Our interest is, since we got these linear waves, and there are two linear waves, to understand if you have uh, in more, uh, more nonlinearity, uh, in more nonlinearity conditions, three wave interactions like is done in normal plasma physics. To have three wave interactions and to understand whether you have or not, you need to analyze these dispersion uh, curves. And if these dispersion curves in omega and k plane are intersected, this means that you have three wave interaction. And then, if you understand that there are three wave interaction, you may use multi-scale asymptotic methods to derive these equations for uh, wave <laughs> analysis shows our positive oops analysis shows that that you may have three types of uh, three, four types of 
nonlinear three wave interactions. Three magnetopoentary wave interact, and uh, there is interaction, uh, intersections of uh, dispersion proofs. Three magnetostrophic wave interacts, two magnetostrophic waves, and one magnetopoentary wave interact, and two magnetopoentary waves, and one magnetostrophic wave, wave interact. So you have in the system four types of three wave interaction. And if you understand this type of interaction, and if you understand uh, conditions of uh, uh, existence of such equations, you simply may derive three wave equations for uh, three wave interactions for waves amplitude. To do this, we use multiple scale asymptotic method. I think everybody knows that I just will remind you just uh, make asymptotic series, so you represent all one quantities in your equations in asymptotic series, and then you collect uh, uh, terms with uh, same order on epsilon. So in first order on epsilon, you will get these linear uh, solutions, and uh, when considering the second order on epsilon, you will see uh, that asymptotic solution is not converging due to resonance effect, and you use traditional compatibility conditions uh, how to uh, okay, derive asymptotic solutions uh, which is compatible on larger time and on larger uh, sp uh, space. So <coughs> you need to have two time, uh, two times, small time and fast time, you need to have uh, two uh, different scales, space scale. And if you use these compatibility conditions, it's very simple, it may be done uh, very simply. Um, okay, in mathematics, you will find uh, three, four equations for interacting waves, for amplitude, small amplitude of interaction waves. First are uh, equations for magnetopoietic carrier wave interaction, then you have equations for three magnetostrophic waves interaction, and you have equations for magnetopoietic waves and one magnetostrophic wave, and equation for two magnetostrophic waves and one magnetopoietic wave. If you <laughs> okay, thank you. So. This is very rich physical situation, but if you put uh, vertical magnetic field zero, you will not have these instabilities. Since you have four type of four uh, equations for amplitude of interacting waves, you may do okay everything which is being done on nonlinear optics and on plasma physics. You may analyze parametric decay instabilities, and you may analyze parametric amplification. So we obtained at, at least predicted uh, four type decay instabilities when magnetopoincare waves decays into two magnetopoincare waves. Another is uh, magnetostrophic wave decays into two magnetostrophic waves. And of course we obtained growth rate of this instability. Magnetopoincare wave decays into one magnetopoincare wave and one magnetostrophic wave, and magnetostrophic wave decays into one magnetostrophic wave and one magnetopoincare. And we got uh, growth rates of such instabilities. And similar, if you have, uh, similar as in plasma physics, if you have three or four uh, parametric instabilities for parametric decay, you have analogously parametric amplification. Magnetopoincare wave amplification in magnetopoincare wave and magnetostrophic wave amplification in magnetostrophic field. Magnetopoincare wave amplification in magnetostrophic wave field and magnetostrophic wave amplification in magnetopoincare wave field with increment. So we predicted such instability and we got, of course, again, increments or growth rate of this instability. Now I'm going to another part of my talk. Uh, we want to see what is happening with Rosby waves. So we take 
uh, weather point approximation, and we have uh, dispersion emulation, and uh, have solution, those be wave solutions in shown of weather MHD in external magnetic field. What we can see, again, where we have uh, non uh, dis uh, dispersion curves, and there's a dis dispersion curve in presence of magnetic field, and there are dispersion curves we provided for nature of moist. So that compare results with uh, results of uh, Rosby wave geophysical fluid dynamics. Again, we use similar fast matching condition for uh, three wave interactions. This shows that there may be three wave interactions with a magnetic field for magnetized Rosby waves. And we use again this multi scale asymptotic methods, but now we have only one Rosby wave. It's much more easier algebraically. We again use compatibility conditions so that exclude uh, secular terms, and we get equations uh, for three wave interactions of Rosby waves in uh, external magnetic field. And now, since we have this, we simply analyze instabilities, parametric instabilities, and we show that there is parametric decay of Rosby wave in external magnetic field and there exists parametric amplification, again, in external magnetic field. So to conclude, our main result is extension or, how to say, revision of Schoenow weather theory in presence of external magnetic field, and analysis of three wave interactions for Poincaré flows and for Rosby flows. And now we are doing uh, something similar uh, in presence of external uh, toroidal field and in presence of external poroidal field. But this work is just under, can we are just as it's doing. Thank you for your kind cooperation. <laughs> So very interesting. So two questions. The first question is, what is the magnetic boundary condition? The first question is, what is the magnetic boundary condition? And the second question is, I think boundary conditions for B are here. Uh, this uh, uh, magnetic field is uh, how to say freezed to surface, and we have also boundary conditions in the in bottom. Here you see boundary conditions are uh, normal, traditional when you derive Schumacher equations. My problem is that when you derive traditional Schumacher equations, you neglect both z component, vertical component of hydrodynamic flow and vertical component of magnetic flow. And uh, when in this situation, you don't have these conditions uh, consequence from the derogance free magnetic field. When you want to have these conditions, you ex uh, have new one, how to say, extra equations for vertical component of magnetic field. Okay, and the second question is, I, I think you can apply this to the tidal problem. I think, um, if you, oh, okay, in the right hand side of the equation, you have the inhomogeneous tidal force, tidal potential, and then you can apply to the tidal problem. And there will be a resonance uh, for the two modes, fast and slow modes, uh, resonant with the tidal, fo tidal frequency. So, yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. No such problem. Any other questions? Have you, have you tried uh, simulating the equations to find the strongly nonlinear behavior. So, what happens to the waves when when their uh, amplitudes non -linear. grow? Non -linear. Strongly nonlinear limit. We just may do one deep problem. We may solve uh, like in gas dynamics 
סוף שימן וסלוש, רק סימפור ורס, אלוהים אנפור. So what we did for high non-linearity, for such type of waves not, it's also undergoing this. I was a bit confused about your very last comment. You said you're going to go on to do it for poloidal fields. Is that what you said? Yeah. What, what, what do you mean by poloidal fields in this context? Uh, just, you know... Uh, As opposed uh, to what you've done? Uh, seems to be uh, no, not here. For poloidal and poloidal fields, in case of you don't have vertical flow. If you have vertical flow, you don't have such stationary solution. My uh, last comment was if you use even traditional Show of water theory without external magnetic field, you may find again three wave interactions. Oh, okay, thank yes. you. And then we are doing this just. Yeah, okay. Bill's pointing in the y direction already in there. He doesn't. You know. Oh, they're already in there. It's, a, it's, it's, the, it's the z field that's the key. Yeah. Yeah, but everybody's already done the other ones. Okay. I would just like to thank you on behalf of everyone, I think, for organizing such a wonderful meeting. Thank you for coming, because meeting is wonderful when good scientists are coming and agree to come. Meeting is our presentations, not emails. It's very easy because, okay, I like... I know you for some publications, I know him for everybody. And when I decided to make invitations, my, okay, very, okay, I decided to invite, okay, most people whom I see as top level scientists. Some of them do not because it was too late because they went already their vacancies. And we may do this next time, much earlier. While I've got the mic, I just does do your equations conserve analogs of all the general MHD conserved quantities, or yes. so you keep everything really? Yeah, okay. yeah, I think so. Yeah, I actually was wondering if you have, you have vertical field, do you conserve angular momentum if you have external vertical field threading through? Uh, how can yeah, I think so. If you uh, press. If you average that component oh. of magnetic field, yes, everything is okay. 